This program is brought to you by Hungry Jacks and Bunnings Warehouse. Friday night hoops, Sydney and the Sixers. The Adelaide 36 they came in off the back of their pre-season NBA win with plenty of hype. And the first game of the season for them against Illawarra didn't go so well, but back on track. And in this game, look at the total over under for the points. It is high, 176 and a half. It is because we know how good... Stadium in Changi set up a loss of rumour under. Malangan Pack Sports, Pertandingan diteruskan di Denmark Di mana para pemain ditagi untuk memberikan yang terbaik Look at that this week saying you guys are practically the Golden State Warriors coming into town. Have you have you heard the noise and what are the motivation levels like? Definitely heard the noise. Um, we haven't really paid a lot of attention to it. We got one goal in mind and that's to come in and win this game and make it as competitive as possible. So the game wouldn't be fun without talking so it'll just be an added edge to the game tonight. Knowing that they have been talking a bit of trash, how much more satisfying would that make getting the double? It'll make it more satisfying, uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's just one win right now, so it's early, uh, but we'll see them a lot throughout the year, hopefully at the end of the year too, so it'll be fun. What has CJ said about the game plan tonight? Just to come in and execute our plans. Um, you got guys like Xavier Cooks, Walton, DJ, uh, those guys that make really good plays. They're really good players. So come in and do what we can do on them and then execute on the offense and see where it goes. Good luck for it. Thank you. Well, Xavier Cooks and Derek Walton Jr. have been leading the way for the Kings. They're coming off that big win over Brisbane. Let's take a look at how the Kings compare to the other. 
other teams in the league and just how well they are going this season. And that's what I'm talking about, potency. 95 points a game, but they're doing it by committee. They've got four players that average between 14 and 18. They're rebounding it well. They share it with the assist. Really unselfish team that's got some depth and playing with a whole lot of confidence. We can't wait for this one this evening. Let's bring in your commentary team now. Jack Everin, Leonard Copeland and Andrew Gaze, guys. Uh, thank you very much, Joe. And Hammer, good evening, everyone. Great to have your company, as always, for Friday Night Hoops here in the Hungry Jacks NBL. Two of the most iconic names in Australian basketball, Leonard Copeland and Andrew Gaze, as we take a look at the champion stuff. Welcome to you. What are you most looking forward to from this team? I'm looking forward to Simons against Randall. Simons played great, fantastic defense. I'm looking forward to Franks against Luke and Cleveland against Walton. The Kings scored 95 points a game. They get it in goal, but so do Adelaide. The Adelaide 36 is true. We've only seen them in a couple of games because they spent some time over in America, which you were there to see. Their champion starting five on your screen. Well, Hammer hit the nail on the head. These three imports are spectacular. Franks, Randall, and, and Cleveland. They can put points on the board. They're going to dominate the ball. And I think it's how they get involved, the others. How they get DJ going. Daniel Johnson, who's off to his slowest start in an Adelaide 36's uniform. And uh, Mitch McCarron, the way in which he contributes the ball is as good as any in the competition in that area. Sydney Kings have won 10 of their last 15 inside this venue at Kudos Bank Arena. What did you two think of Paul Smith's comments during the week? Oh, I love it. I, the fact that, that you got owners that involved in what's happening, you know, it, it, it fires the team up. And as long as he's talking, they're talking. If they're winning, leave it alone. Vasilevich, little run up, off target. He's Antonius Cleveland. There and helping out on the old boards. Xavier Cooks. Hand off to Tim Suarez in the mid range. There's Cooks tipping it straight back out. Feet set. Knockdown doesn't go for Walton. We'll say this right now. If Adelaide don't rebound, there you go. Now they'd be, be in trouble for sure. And This is a similar start to what we saw against the Brisbane Bullets last week where they were 1-10 from the field. It took a little while to get going, but we know they can explode on the offensive end as Franks just walks into a free throw. It's, uh, the starts that they're having is something that I'm sure Chase Buford would be overly impressed with. The Kings 4-1 to start this season. Adelaide, as we mentioned, we only saw them for the first time last weekend because of their pre-season trip to America. One win and one loss so far. Randall with a hand in the face. It's an 8-0 start for the visitors. And we did say the golden, the, the, the NBO Golden State Warriors, didn't we? <laughs> Looking it up straight away. Craig Randall shooting the lights out. As Cooks need a bucket, go to the X-Men. Well, that's right. In the first few games of the season, I think clearly the best player in the competition. They had, uh, by his standard offensively, a lot of people think a quiet game and only had the eight points, but he just does what is required at the right times. He's a very unselfish player. My goodness. This is the offensive power that everyone has been talking about with the Adelaide 36ers. You don't whack up 24 and make 24 three-pointers against an NBA roster if you don't have goodness. This is the offensive power that everyone has been talking about with the Adelaide 36ers. You don't whack up 24 and make 24 three-pointers against an NBA roster if you don't have talent. And DJ just arms things down with a nice drive to the bar. And expect him to take the next shot. <laughs> He's got to get it up. <laughs> I love that about him. He's aggressive. And Frank's pass telegraph. Justin Simon, you saw a former defensive player of the year in this competition. One into the other. One is key as well. We saw that loss against the Kings. Tight pants. He was only one of three. And the fact that he 
only got three shots up, it would have been a concern. And then he bounced back. I think it was eight of ten, 23 points a couple of days later against the Bullets. And that is just all class. A floater. Nothing but cotton. Is it fair to say they mean business? Well, they're in. Swift hands by the Adelaide captain, McCarran. Thirty-sixes away to a fast start. The Kudos Bank Arena. Franks and McCarran in a two-man game. Foul on the floor. Points won't count. Just love the ball movement on that play. As we take a look at Cleveland, just starting to see him, just walking into a three now. See if he's going to make it before you really close out half. But I think that's too much of a start. There's a tougher one for Randall. And the unselfishness we're seeing from the Adelaide 36ers, these first few possessions, is, is something that's really standing out. It makes it hard to go. It's blocked shot by Angus Glover. Saw all that on the Amy replay. CJ Bruton coached the Adelaide 36ers. Second season in charge. 11 wins, 17 losses so far. That's sloppy defensive work by Sydney. CJ did the one at home as well. He won a championship here with the Sydney Kings. So. Well, funny you mention that, coach, because we went back. Because we've got a timeout, five minutes remaining in the opening quarter. We went back through the archives and took a look back at CJ Bruton winning a title with the Sydney Kings in 2004 2005. Wow. It's like you knew it was coming. I, well, I knew it was coming, but I didn't think it was coming that quick. <laughs> Yeah, he was one of those, CJ was, was one of those players and there you see the recognition that will be there for eternity because of the contribution that he made to the Sydney Kings franchise and the thing about CJ, he was one of those players that you just like to leave sleeping dogs with light. Oh yeah. Had a bit of hammering in, in, in the sense that he was quiet. If you just want to let it, okay, while he's quiet, just let him be quiet. But as soon as I started talking trash, he dropped three threes on me straight away. Three goes. Shut up, him alone. You shut up and just leave him alone, coach. <laughs> he was like that. Six time NBL champion, CJ Bruton, which is an equal NBL record. Now he's experiencing it on the other side. Mm. There's Dad, too. You see uh, Cal Bruton, one of the all-time greats, in the background. Chilling in the oh, background with the sunglasses on, the on. Come on, Cal. Cal's chilling. Look at him. Always got a smile on his face. Boy, they love hard glasses. Yeah, He's wearing so. <laughs> Cal Bruton can pull off just about anything. The Sydney need to make some adjustments out of the timeout. Suarez a long way from the cup. Saw Simon, the fight and the finish. Just a breakdown on the weak side. Really well read by Simon. They switched on the weak side and he just slipped the screen. And two of the easiest points he's going to get this evening, you suspect. His four points is their leading scorer. Franks has five and Cleveland has five for Adelaide. Called on Kawhi Noy, former can side man. I guess, Coach, we're still trying to get a bit of a read on Adelaide, aren't we? Because we've only seen them for a couple of games so far. One was a good win and one was a, a disappointing loss. Well, since... You're exactly right. It's the fact that they went over to the States and played so well that everyone would be hoping and thinking that they're going to be a great team. Well, there's Mitch McCarran, and what he's doing is getting to the O boards. We saw in that earlier. Sydney Kings 
5 and 11, but the Kings have dominated with points in the paint throughout the course of the season. And what they're doing, they're packing it in. And they're not necessarily daring Sydney to shoot the three, but they are making a concerted effort to take away the paint. And there's the legend himself, Cal Bruton. Well, 7 of 11 from the field, they started off in really sharp form. But, you know, you look at the this Sydney Kings team and how explosive they also can be. They had four points in the opening seven minutes against Brisbane, and then they went on a tear and outscored the bullets 66 to 35 if you don't mind so they can really light it up quick this board from Suarez Got knocked out of his hands by Drimmick six seconds for Derek Walton pulls up over the top of Landon wow he plays at his own pace never in a hurry but has the capacity to do things like that. We saw that in that opening game against Illawarra where he dropped 32. You can turn it on on the offensive end, as can this guy, Franks. Glover, great pass. Shreds the iron for Suarez. And right there is why they are the leading scoring team in the competition. They test the defensive transition of their opponents more than any other team in the competition. Now, that might have been a little bit of a basket hanging and leaking out by the big man, but... It's leaking out is something you would know a lot about. That's you. why I can speak with some sort of level of authority on what Suarez was doing. And they've been so aggressive at getting the paint, particularly early in that first eight seconds on their offensive sets. They, they push it down there and they're to penetrate. So a five-point lead to the Adelaide 36ers. Adelaide are one of those teams where you, you sort of need to take away the three-point shot or as much as you can. Make them drive. Yeah, the, you don't want to give up any wide open layups, but if you take them off, you run them off the three-point line, it hurts their scoring a lot because they take a lot of threes. It's interesting with the 36ers coach. So including their two NBA games, in their wins over Phoenix and Illawarra, mm -hmm. 32 of 60 from outside well, at yeah. 53%. In their two losses against OKC and Tasmania, 11 of 40 at 28%. Yep. So there's a big difference. When they win, they shoot well. When they lose, they're not. You can, well, you won't lose if you enter that competition. I can't guarantee that you'll win, but you'd be pretty happy if you win $50,000 of guaranteed cash. With thanks to Latrobe Financial. NBL.com.au forward slash legend. Speaking of legend, Shane Hill, courtside. Good evening, gentlemen. And uh, I think you're right about the three-point shooting from the Adelaide 36ers. When they're hot, it's going to be great. But they have to find ways to be able to mix up the three-point shots as well as getting to the paint like we saw DJ do before. Put it on the ground, get themselves to the free-throw line. And I think they'll start to evolve as the season goes on to get that balance right. Because when they miss, the Sydney Kings are going to run it straight down their throat like we saw before. Absolutely. That's right. And the thing that's really prevented them from doing that right now is the Kings have been great on the O-boards. We've seen McCarran get in there and be able to get uh, some second chance points for his team. Free throws for Sunday Ditch. Signed a big extension at the end of last season and we all know of what he can do and the improvement he's made from when he first came into the competition where he's at now. upon primarily the take on him is he, he, he defensive specialist but last season he, he has become a lot more of an offensive threat average 12 and a half points a game yeah. last season yeah well when you think of Adelaide you think of offense but when you got McCarron Ditch and Cleveland that's a pretty good defensive side as well his hands by Hiram Harris knocks it out of bounds five on the shot clock Joe Healy courtside yeah thanks just listening into the last couple of Adelaide timeouts there are lots of players contributing in that team huddle leaders all over Sunday Dead Mitch McCarron Robo AC all giving their input talking through the matchups and the sets and then CJ just at the end there adding that they need to be better defensively and, and stop the Kings getting those transition points 
Easy put back for two for Walton Jr. Having his say on this first quarter. Harris missed the cut at Detch. McCarran. Top of the key. Got into the paint. Little fall away. Looked nice. Offensive rebound for Adelaide. Detch can't put it back. Franks all over Crooks. We got a piece of that one. It's a scrap underneath the basket. Sydney win the battle. Crooks to the other end. Ball on the floor. So hard to stop in that situation. He's got a, he's got a touch. A, a guard touch. Nice and soft off the glass. On the move. Back to a three-point game. It's the closest it's been for quite some time. And McCarran changes that. He's been really aggressive, hasn't he, Mitch McCarran? And I like an aggressive Mitch McCarran. And that, that's what we're talking about with this, what you have to stop. With the Sydney Kings is that early, even on a made basket, they're looking to run and run at the, the defense and puts a lot of pressure. So how do, you, trans. how do you stop that? Well, firstly, it helps when you're taking the ball out of the rim. You then you've got to get back and, and, and build a wall. And you see there, the players are in position. you just got to make sure you're trying to keep them out of the paint. They're going to be super aggressive to try and get to the rim. One thing that'll kill... set of circumstances and we've seen it already here tonight the hustle the aggressive on the defensive end can play multiple positions undersized big he's one of those guys you'd love to have on your team because of prepared to do a lot of the grunt work he averages um, five rebounds in, in nine minutes so yeah, he gets after it just pure aggression and this is where he's going to have his hands full six foot six Lauren Harris. So, to play that position, that's right. Very much undersized. And, and this week's volumes for his versatility. He, he's got the, one of the toughest defensive signs that are going around right now with Xavier Cooks. And although he got called for the foul there, I like the way he kept him in front, slides his feet, and puts Xavier Cooks to the free throw line where he has been horrifically bad. Like, beyond just bad. Horrifically bad. Talk to me, Jackie boy. I don't have the stats in front of me right now. <laughs> Look at Paul Smith's body language. That tells you everything you need to know. 13 of 32 for the season. And the Make that 13 of 34 and 4 of 14 in this the venue. Problem is, the problem is every other team sees this. So I'm going to send him to the line every time he touches the ball. Don't Maybe not every time, ball. but you certainly in those when you're getting blown by like that.
watching the Hungry Jacks MEL 25 to 20 at quarter time. The Adelaide 36ers leading over the Sydney Kings on a beautiful, beautiful Friday night in the Harbour City. Two of the legends of the NBL, Andrew Gaze and Leonard Copeland. Alongside me, Joe Healy and Shane Heal are courtside as well. Gazy, what you make of the opening? Well, we spoke about the three-point shooting. Hammer and Copes mentioned it, and it was a big part of the, the factor in that first quarter. Oh, five for the Sydney Kings, and they're ran coming off and making it four of seven. I just thought it was about time for him to get a shot off. Adelaide lead it by eight. You can see on the bottom right hand of your screen, Sydney haven't trailed by more than 11 at any stage this season. And that includes their loss last week to Cairns in this venue. Vasilovic misses out. They're being tested right now, the Kings. Well, they are at both ends of the floor. And now it looks like a really controlled, and I like the way the Adelaide 36 are playing. They're getting it through some hands in the half court. They're not just coming down, blazing away. Pick and pop for Johnson. Xavier Cooks drags that rebound in. He's second of the, of the night. They certainly look like they're sharing the ball a lot more, which is going to get them some wide open shots. Well, even that last one from DJ was one that he, certainly after you've explored and got it through some hands, you, you more than have. I know he hasn't had a great start to the season. What he has been doing is making the extra passes as well. As Randall is just putting on a delight to watch. He's got a beautiful stroke. A beautiful stroke. He's doing it with such speed, the pace in which he can get that shot off. 28 points on Saturday. 17 of those came in the fourth quarter in their win over Illawarra. Hunter from outside. That's not, not there. And it's the context of those team. That game was on place. I mean, that was a Steph genuine... Curry. Some Steph Curry type stuff there. Genuine heat <laughs> check when you think things are going. But he, uh, those 17 he had in the last were, were much needed with a difference in the game. Cooks has six points. Brings it back to a six-point game as well. Adelaide from their two games so far, the second best team in the competition for second quarters. Johnson turns the corner. Beautiful mid-range strike. There's just so much talent on that team. If they can learn to play together, share the ball, help each other out, then they got a real chance. Go back to one word you just used there, Coach. So you, and you play Won't make CJ happy. This is a golden opportunity. Feet set in the corner. I like what we've seen so far in the way we spoke about how they are distribute the ball. And I think what it also goes, you also got to know, even though you want to share, and that's a big word, you didn't put that pivot foot down. Look as ugly as it was all get out that that was not a travel. Oh, that was ugly. Oh, it was ugly. It was real ugly. <laughs> but what you also got to do with this Adelaide 36 is, and, and where it can get tough is when the game's on the line, who you're going to go to, who's going to be your priori the priorities, and there's bottom left of the screen there, did you, Sean Bruce and Antonius Cleveland? And it's still a little jaw jacking right there. Watching it was there, just too close. Universally rated, Sean Bruce is the number one trash talker here in the Hungry right? Jacks NBL. Number one. I think it's a badge that he wears with honour. Nothing wrong with it, pal. You back it up, there's nothing wrong with it. Walt Jr. puts the moves on Ditch and then out for Noy. 
That's two in a row he's missed. Well, they're all late. Right now, you just sense that Adelaide's dropping an opportunity. Sydney can't throw it in the ocean. A couple of turnovers and a, a few four shots. And May, yeah, they're doing well. Got a nice one, but this is where they should be. You'd be looking at, and I'm CJ. I'm thinking I should be 12 up now, not, not just the seven. Sydney Kings... Number two in the competition coming into tonight, three-point percentage. They are zero from eight from outside to start this game. Glover makes it zero from nine. Wow. Randall cuts his way through and draws a foul. Hey, hey. Cleveland, I should say. Apologies. Was a little. There you see Suarez just in that drops position yeah, just a little too late when you've got a, a elite athlete like Cleveland coming at you you got to you got to meet that just a little high if you're just sitting there around there in front of the no charge circle and you got those elite athletes this just, the game is so heavily weighted in favor of the offense that it's really hard and for all the good things Suarez can do it's not like he's the athleticism, the verticality, he's got good size to be able to necessarily do the aerial acrobatics like Cleveland. I like Gigi. <laughs> he dunked it once in Geelong. Thank you. In the thin Geelong air. No, it would ring. It's out of play. Let's turn it over. Nick Kyrgios taking in a Sydney home game as he always does. I thought he'd love Sydney. It's the main thing. I thought, was it South East? I guess he just checked in with there. Maybe he's just diversifying the portfolio a little bit. Maybe he's just on a fake planning mission or something, trying to find out what they're going to run. Scully. Karen for three. Off the front of the iron. He wrote, Drew, and made him. Not taking advantage of uh, some missed opportunities. Glover. All the way in. Good move by Glover, but that was a little too easy. Coming off from the sideline, just straight down and really easy. Kai Soto in for his first minutes. Cleveland got it back and helps himself to another two. I reckon Cleveland and Simon have the longest arms I've seen on, on two guys in a long time. Simon from outside this time. 62% from deep on the season. And that's what he's just brought to the, to the Kings this year. Last, last time he was out here, it was all about the defense. He said he went away and worked on his three-point shooting. Amy replay, Justin Simon. It's not pretty, though, George. It's not, it's not that pretty, is it? It's, it's the end result of his stro stroke uh, finish. You see the follow-through, but it's a, it's a little flat. flat yeah. But you can tell it's... it's, it's John Marion, maybe? Yeah, it's, it's like it's it's mechanical. So he knows where he's got to get to with the destination. He's trying to keep that form. But, hey, right now the numbers suggest that he's doing quite well from the three-point line. Jeez. Noy Cannon's in the spot out. Randall starts exploring for the 36ers. Drop off. Pass outstanding for Franks. Now, how impressive that by Randall. Into the traffic and still knew where to help. What Noy. He's not feeling it tonight, is he? Well, he's missed a lot of basketball last season. Just trying to find his way. Chase Buford's... What about the little cardigan number yeah. he's decided to run with? Ditch the blazer for a knit. This hey! Evening. Hey, Chicago! Uh, well, uh... I'm sure probably... I'm not a, I'm not a of, of, of the three of us here, you would probably be re re regarded as the best when it comes to assessing the fashion elements. No doubt. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now... <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. And, and of the three of us, the knit is probably something I'd associate more with... Uh, with oh, oh, Silver Fox over there. <laughs>
Set. Only three seconds left on that shot clock, but he clearly lost possession. Should have got it back again. Oh. That's not originally what I thought, but oh, I think I'm hammer made on to heard the conversation between the officials about. Number 12 white. So foul, 12 white. Yeah. What have we got there in the end? Let's go. I'm on the ground. That's decision on the court. Let's go. That's the decision on the court. Let's go. 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 let us go Cubs. Right here where he pulls him out of the way. Well, he's just falling in his knees. Yeah, of course. Third time lucky for Kawhi Noy. That's expensive. So does he play for the Adelaide Dirty Sixers? Sydney get themselves back within five again. Randall pulls the trigger. Deadly from outside. Pretty stroke, doesn't he? It is a beautiful stroke, and the, just the willingness for him and the confidence that he has to let it fly from deep. Cleveland is a master, a master thief. He sticks his in long arm in there and pulls that ball like Inspector Gadget. It just when it seemed as though Sydney were clawing their way back in, first the hit from Randall, and then the steal from Cleveland. Randall's ball touches. Nothing but net. Don't even hit the ring. Game high, 10 point lead right now for the Adelaide 36ers. We've got legends in commentary. We've got legends courtside. And Joe Healy has got another legend of Australian basketball. I certainly do. Three time NBA champion, King Special Advisor Luke Longley. Luke, we've loved the build up to this game. Paul Smith is here garnering plenty of attention. AC hit that first three and gave him the stare down. What have you made of it all? Well, I think the game was already exciting for me before all that. Um, you know, Paul's Paul and he'll have his opinions. It doesn't necessarily speak for the rest of us. The game's been great, though, and everyone's fired up to play. And unfortunately, sometimes it's a make, a make shot, miss shot league, and we can't hit the side of a barn. Not the best start for the guys, but they're fighting. What do you want to see more of out there? Oh, I actually think they're playing pretty well. They just can't hit any shots. I really don't mind. Our defensive effort's been pretty good. A little bit of boxing out would be good. Six O boards is too many, obviously. And what about the free throws? There have been a little bit of an issue so far this season. What's your advice to, say, someone like Xavier Cooks? Oh, well, I hesitate to give advice, but it'd be, it'd be nice if he could calm down a little bit, just hit a couple. But usually if he hits his first one, he gets rolling. You've just finished your My Story tour of Australia, talking about your career, the highs and lows. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, well, that was quite challenging for me, actually. There was a bit of a pants drop, to be honest. Um, uh, but people seemed to enjoy it, and, and I didn't mind dropping my pants in the end. So, um, yeah, I missed you, though. You weren't there. I wish I was. Hey, thank you so much. and Enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you. Keep your pants on, Luke. That'll be good. What a legend, though. Starting center, inarguably the greatest team in the history of the game. Mm -hmm. I think we sometimes take the big fella for granted. I know he can be a little media shy from time to time, but... From halfway, Cleveland has called for the foul after as well. So an expensive possession for the 36ers. Wow. 
Smart play by DJ. Knew what was going, knew the shot clock, knew he was going to let it fly, and just stops and takes the charge. Well done. That's Cleveland's second. No major issues for Adelaide or for Sydney at this stage. To speak. Off. Cleveland takes a seat. Simon Vasilievich, Cooks, Walton, and Noy on the floor for Sydney. Frank, Strimmick, McCarran, Randall, and Johnson for the 36ers. Here is Walton Jr. Inside pass for Cooks was blocked. And loose ball will be Adelaide's. Yeah, great recovery from Franks. He was there for the help. They didn't switch that on ball. And he was in that drops position, but played it perfectly and was still was in an, a, enough distance to get that block. And a good one at that. Great timing. Franks with the block. Craig Randall in a mood tonight. He's the game's leading scorer with 13. And it's back to 10 once more. The Silivitz takes it himself. Nice move. What's this end? We only thought the defense was okay, but there's almost 52% from the field, the Adelaide 36ers. Walton Jr. pulls up, foot on the line. That won't count. Again, Sydney continue to explore early in the shot clock. Randall out for Franks. That's off time. Adelaide 5 of 13 from outside tonight. Sydney 2 of 12. The catch and a finish from Xavier Cooks. Sydney bad shot on the offensive end on the defense. They push that ball down the court and get a shot. Respecting that is great. See Frank's coming in and just the control, but that is pinpoint accuracy with the delivery. It's a look away delivery as well. Really nice find. Cooks back to the line. Sigh of relief for everyone. Me too. I, I, I'm, I'm, I just feel bad for him. Five point game. A minute before half time at Kudos Bank Arena. Six is led by as much as 10 in this second quarter. McCarran off the window. It doesn't go. Tipped in by Johnson. It's just too easy. Off the oak boards. They're up to seven now. Seven offensive boards. Walton Jr. Shot clock at 10. Inside pass. You said it earlier, Coach, with Derek Walton Jr. He plays the game at his pace. He operates on his time, and that pass is just another example of that. And when they lost Adams last year, you think there's no way they can bring someone in to do what Adams did. It, it, it is, to me, he's Adams, but he's a little bit calmer. Probably can't score as much, or doesn't score as much, but he's a little bit calmer. He controls the game, um, and he gets guys involved. Yeah, he does it in a different way. Yeah. And... It's the way in which that he plays so with such a, a basketball IQ. You saw it with that pass beforehand, the way he can read the defense, assess where his teammates are, and plays a, a pass ahead of what the game is at, so he knows how it's uh, all going to unfold. Boy goes two of two. Handle to inbound for Adelaide. You're going to explore the early look, and Randall's the man to do just I that. I tell you what, they better get out of that press. You better just play man to man. When you gamble and you give him some daylight, he doesn't need need a lot. The speed at which he can get his shot off and the body control, and of course the ability, most importantly.
Conley to knock it down. Six of 14 now. And he is four of five from the three point line. Six of eight from the field. He's got seven seconds here. Men all over the floor. Sunday, dead wide open. Adelaide had led from the moment this game started. And at half time, lead 50 to 42. And are throwing it straight down at the Sydney Kings on their home floor. They are. They came out straight away. Randall. You know, and it sometimes when guys start talking about a little trash, you can fire the opposition up. And I think the fact that Paul Smith had a couple of things, choice words to say about these guys, they got them going. They, they, were, they heard about it. They read about it, guys. They know. Let's get to Shane Hill courtside. Playing against a very potent offensive team for the Sydney Kings. You guys have done great at the defensive end. Yeah, just trying to limit their transition points. Um, that starts on our offense. If we can get good shots, keep them from running. Talk to me about that first basket, the little stare down for Paul Smith, a little something for him. I don't even know. I don't even know.
Hey, fans. This season, with thanks to Latrobe Financial, we are giving away a guaranteed $50,000. The Latrobe Financial legend. All you need to do is send in a clip of you making a half-court shot for your chance to win a semifinals opportunity to shoot from half court for $50,000. All thanks to Latrobe Financial. Head to the NBL website now to enter. It's as easy as that. NBL.com.au forward slash legends. $50,000 of guaranteed cash. Thanks to Latrobe Financial. There's Justin Simon. His team down eight at the half. Copes, he has nine points of his own on four of four shooting. A couple of rebounds as well, but his primary job is to stop Craig Randall, who has 16 points on six of eight. Well, Craig's just shooting, uh, living, living. play defense well I think it's all about the defense for Sydney right now in, in their game so far in the first half they're, they're averaging giving up only 36 points a game a little over 36 points a game and already the Adelaide 36ers have got the 50 so I think the focus at halftime by Chase Buford would have been more on the defensive end because the way they've been playing here is pretty much how they've been playing all season it's, it's, it's held the skill Sometimes we may be critical of the shot selection, but they, it's, it's about trying to play that up-tempo style. And right now, they, 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 they're sort of going to have to live with them. And, and some of the shots they've missed, you'd normally expect them to make. So what do they have to do to get this win in Sydney? They're going to play some defense. They're going to knock down some shots as well. Like that. Inside, outside. And they were 2 of 13 in the first half from the three-point line. Now, they're a much better shooting team than that. Walton Jr., 38% three-point shooter this season. Randall swings back out for Johnson. Not like him to give up an open look like that. Cleveland forced into a tough one. Offensive rebound again for Adelaide. And Kane McCarran is going up. Great, great chase, fighting over the top of the screen and not giving up. Just a deflection, little block shot. The ceiling, it's catch and shoot in rhythm. Right back in the game. That's how quickly you can turn when you can knock down the three ball. They score the first five points, six points, I should say, in this third quarter. Adelaide yet to get on the board. Cleveland's pulling the trigger. That's not going to make it either. King starting with momentum in this third quarter. Walton Jr. through traffic. Tied away at 50. Timeout Adelaide. Straight points in two minutes and a minute and a half, Gazy. It was, and the Adelaide 36ers look lethargic on the offensive end. In contrast, how much different does the game look when the three ball starts to drop? They were getting similar looks to this in the first half. They just weren't going in. And now the penetration starts to open up when you knock down those three balls and it's all just a little bit too easy to start this third period for the Sydney Kings. Amy replay. Chase Buford happy with what he's seeing from the Sydney Kings and third quarters have been a problem for Adelaide albeit it's a small sample size they've only played two games coach but in the two games they have played they're averaging 14 points a game in third quarter that's so not get it done. they've had to play catch up in the fourth of both of their games but that's not going to get it done whatever's happening at halftime I don't know what the speech is I don't know what focus they have coming out of that locker room, but they've got to keep the focus in. Gazy, go back to this action here. Talk us through Justin Simon defensively. Yeah, well, what he did, they talk about getting skinny. That is, when you're going to fight over the top of the screen, and because he can shoot it from so deep, normally when the, when you're a couple of metres past the three-point line, you're saying, well, no matter how it is, just go under and catch him on the other side. But because he can shoot it so from so far out, you get skinny, and it's all about the chase. The drops guy's there to be intimidated to contest. He comes from behind. 
perfect execution of what they're trying to do, getting over the top on that on ball. Johnson doesn't get it to go, and Xavier Cooks drags in the rebound. Simon got himself a little confused. Here's Vasilievich up top. Sydney still looking to take the lead for the first time in the game. And they're pushing that ball too. That is tough. It's not quick. It's not particularly athletic. But it's experience and it's skill and it's touch. It's the seven-time leading scorer for the Adelaide 36ers, Daniel Johnson. Cooks misses on three attempts and then a foul for a push in the back on McCarran. He's tough. Nine points, five rebounds for Xavier Cooks. Last year against the 36ers in their three games, averaged 22 and a half points, 11 rebounds and two blocks a game. He slaughtered Adelaide every time he saw them. And one thing I love about him is you never have to want to play for him. Most of his offense comes to Scores tied once again at Kudos Bank Arena. One loss for the season so far for Sydney. It came last Friday night at this venue against Cairns. Adelaide, one win and one loss to start the season. Right there we see DJ coming in and just splitting the two defenders. That's, again, a little too easy. Gets between Franks and Johnson. Down the other end, he's sending a pick on Randall, and Frank slipped out of it too early. You've got to make sure you get contact to give Randall a chance to get some separation. It doesn't mean a lot of time, but just make sure that just make some connection on Simon because we know how elite a defender he is. Long Jr. gets things moving. Exploring, and then the pass for Suarez. Sydney in front for the first time. He is on another level. The way he gets that ball up the floor and finds the right guy. Ooh, Karen loses the handle. The hustle from Simon. Things happening for the Kings, and it's starting with that man, Derek Walton Jr. He puts on a show, doesn't he? He's putting on a show. So many different ways. We see him come out, knock down the three ball, and then the penetration and threading the needle on Randall pulls up from the from the Sydney Olympic Park. <laughs> he says, "Hold on, just hold on." Gee, if they're the types of shots they're going to rely on to win, he is going to have to be something extraordinary this season. And right now, they needed it though. Extend their lead to three. Some suggestion that Walton Jr. has been a little passive in his last couple of outings, but he's taking over in this third quarter. And he does it when you need it. Here we see. That is... Silences the kudos back. Last couple of threes. There's not a lot of sophistication. It's not like it's coming from any sense. It's just two elite athletes That's stepping in the three ball. Yeah. Double. yeah. Franks in double figures. He, Randall, and Cleveland. Hey, hey, there for Adelaide. Hey, 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 Derek Walton Jr., the only king in double figures in this game. Drimical open in the corner. There's Simon. Numbers against him. Calls off the chase. Only for a second, though. Oh. Suarez ran the floor. This is the bunny. Second time around. Oh, dear. McCarran's pass chopped off. Walton Jr. stripped by McCarran. Eventually, noise. Someone put it in place. 
So read that from McCarran. McCarran's renowned for the look away. That's where he probably needed it. And right there, just the determination to get back. And there's the foul on Suarez. Little doubt about that. Walter looked like he came up lame on that last play. He's all right, though. And Frank sits down, 10 points. A couple of rebounds as well. A little surprised to see Frank come out at this particular stage, though, where they're struggling offensively, and that went halfway down and almost went in. He's getting further and further out every time, Craig Randall. He's not going to stop. Noy, catch and shoot. He hasn't been able to get going tonight. That's two of eight from the field for Kowart Noy. One of six from the three-point line as well. Kowatnoi clearly has been given a license to, to let it fly. And even when right now where things aren't going for him, they're not dropping, he's still shooting him like he's supposed to. And, it's, yep. and, and that only comes through the training you're doing, the role that you, 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 that's been set for you. And it takes people, although he'd, he'd like to see a few more go in, he's still going to be encouraging him to let that fly to get him going. And Mitch McCarran with the three ball. Always selective with when he takes his turn, Mitch McCarron. Well, they're 9 of 22, and they've needed him. They've needed him because they've uh, struggled I mean, trying to get to the penetration and some of the other options they've had a look at. Walton Jr. hurts them. The double came, and he was wide open. Well, as they move the three-point line in, the way these guys are shooting the ball these days it just looks so easy. It does. It's a good point, and that's just the way the game's evolved and how much work these guys put in. The repetitions of giving them up at practice becomes easy, and that is a tough, tough play behind the backboard. Randall showing the full suite of skills that he can bring to the NBL. 21 points for Craig Randall. Foul on the floor on Harris. Fresh off winning a summer league championship with Portland. See, that's just, that's poor rotations. If that's what you're going to do and you see McCarran going down there, that's too late down the other end. Randall forced underneath the bucket and still uses those arms that come up with it. But uh, down the other end of the floor, it was a wide open look for Walton who started to get things going. Okay, after just made a three, he has a spell. I don't like this lineup. He's got, got a bag. And a block call on Harris. Points of count for Noy. When you're struggling from the field to get some of these easy ones, get the full scoreboard ticking over yourself, that'll do your confidence a world of good when that, that next open three comes up. in the last two seasons, Kawhi Noy. 18 games in the 2021 season, 22 last year. Sorry, the season prior, I should say. And last year, 16 games only, Coach. So he's really only played half a season in the three years we've seen him. Yeah, it's good to see him back on the floor enjoying himself. He's got a smile on his face. And like you're right, Joy, the eight man, the, the amount of shots he probably should have, but they're coming. He keeps shooting the way he's shooting. Two minutes remaining in this third quarter. It's been an eventful one. Vasilevic fights to get clear of Trimic and then takes it to the rack. Let's move about to this lineup. We got one three-point shooter on the floor. I'm going in. Uh, uh, this is when you mix it up. Let me play a zone. And they continue to tee off. It's three-point attempt number 24 for them. Nine makes. DJ for three. It's a straight-up shot. 
shootout on Friday Night Hoops. Kudos Bank Arena, 71-68, the Sydney Kings leading the Adelaide.
late 36s. And that right there you're looking wow. at is one of the best yo-yo artists, if that's the right terminology, in the world. Yeah, I, I remember the bit around the world, a bit of uh, rock the baby, walk the dog. <laughs> I was the king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Coca Cola Royal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys are too huge. You should remember it, Coke. Now, that's some special stuff. And you know what? That last three, it just. I think that was almost worth sick because of the way the game was unfolding and the tempo just keeps, keeps Adelaide in distance. And Sean Bruce does the job of trying to stop Randall. It's going up. Uh, it misses. Oh, that was it. Greg Randall, 25. Now and, and CJ would know him well, and sometimes there's you just gotta, in order to give him a spell so you can keep his energy on the defensive end because they're, they're certainly under pressure here and trying to figure out how to contain it. But uh, but yeah, certainly I think he looks like they do look different right now. And until such a time as you perhaps refine your roles a little bit more and you have a little bit more confidence in how the combinations you can use, uh, certainly right now he's. A big part of it. Of course, but, but, but in the odd times when he comes down the floor and might take a bad shot at you. You've got to take the good with the bad with Randall. No, sir. i got to get him off that. Get him off the floor. Let him know. Boy, you took another bad shot. We're going to sit you down. Johnson drives. Draws a foul. He's got free throws coming. Let's get courtside to Joe Healy. Yeah, 29 to 18 there in the third. The Kings obviously very happy with their output after the half. Chase Buford in the huddle there just saying, be solid with the ball, but keep playing with pace. And just one on Quite Noy. They brought him out for a quick spell, but Luke Longley spoke at the Kings pregame function, function and specifically mentioned Noy as someone that they're quite excited about and, and confident that he will start to increase his output as well. I know that you see the way that he's continuing to shoot the ball and they've refined a the role for him. And they've worked through this period where things are not dropping as frequently as he would like, but making sure you not terrible, keep no, the three confidence. For nine. Three for nine's not terrible, but he's had some wide open looks that, that probably he should have knocked down. 13 points in round two, that's his highest score of the season so far. Four or six from the field that night. Franks, the defense sat off and he makes them pay. Tied away at 72. Yeah, a little handoff and Xavier Cooks looked like he was trying to help out or maybe even thinking about switching and just a miscommunication. Wide open Franks, like he's playing a game of horse out there.
find a way to get to the paint. No, I agree. When you look at Randall, though, I think Hannah's point is valid. He has Bryce Cotton type of talent and impact that he can have on the league. Just doesn't. Right now, he expresses his emotions a whole lot differently. And there's the foul. Clear foul. No doubt about that whatsoever. Amy replay tells no lies. Tony's Cleveland on the line. In the old.com.au forward slash legends. It's our Latrobe Legends competition this season. Cleveland goes one or two. And 36 has been pretty polished from the free throw line tonight. 10 of 12. Sydney, 6 of 10. It has been their Achilles heel this season. Hunter rolls to the basket. Vasilevich honors the cut. Well, the last few plays, the middle on ball, I know we saw the DJ do it from the 45 on the sideline, but before that, the middle on ball is causing the Adelaide 36s all sorts of problems. of fortune fell back into his arms Cleveland can't tip it in McCarran does you know the rule that's a delay to Jake I think might have a delay game warning was that Jordan just a little caution perhaps delay a game Mitch McCarran has snuck up to 12 points on 5 of 9 Captain leading from the front, as he always does for the 36ers. Short clock down to eight. Time for Walton Jr. to explore. Pull up himself. Roy snatched it out of the arms of Daniel Johnson. CJ upset. Looks like he felt might have got fouled on that rebounding contest. comes back and doesn't hesitate. He's upset and he takes it out. His anger out on the three-point line. <laughs> All five of Adelaide starters are in a double figures now. Off the back of that Johnson three. Not to see that. But he's just sharing the ball. The plan as a team. Here's the rebounding contest there. Oh, I think he's got a little bit Jordy Hunter just whacked him across the head. And then he goes to the other end of the floor and says, all right, if you want to be like that, take your three with you. Have a piece of that. Okay. And they're the ones when you look at... No, okay, okay, I got you. I got you. And some of the unusual fouls you see officials find and then a seemingly obvious one like that, that's where it can get a little testy for the players. We have ourselves a coach's challenge. Two-point game at Kudos Bank Arena. Scott Becker, Nico Fernandez, Craig Copes. Our officials tonight. Now the challenge here is from Adelaide and they're challenging the hands foul on Mitch McCarran. Well, what's your record like, Gazy? I'm not bad so far. Hey. I've only done a couple of games. The challenge is unsuccessful. Well, that was a the quick foul assessment. Game will stand. Two they didn't shots. give us a chance to show it. They had a look and said, no, sir. That is a, <laughs> that is a no, sir, if you're ever going to see one. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh. Mm. Taking a swipe at it. It's only when you swipe down, the ball goes up. And that ball almost touched the roof. <laughs> so there's a little, a lot of ball. Yeah, interesting one to challenge. Well, that's right. It's one that, unless you're 100% sure, you want to might need that thing going down the stretch. One of the hottest tickets in town right now, the Sydney Kings. Four and one to start the season, and they love a winner in the Harbour City. Crowds have been off the charts in the NBL so far this season. Why well, wouldn't it be with the quality we're seeing out on the floor? And stuff, great entertainment, and even a bit of yo-yo action. <laughs>
watch you do yo-yo when you were young, Cubs? A little bit, but not like Daisy. Daisy claimed he was the king of the yo-yo. <laughs> Simon's to the line for an extra one, but Simon's, like I said, only had two field goal attempts in that loss to Cairns. But it's not like when you see his body language, he's soaking it up or demanding the ball. He, he seems happy to understand his strength is on the defense. Just like he's got a really good attitude. for a review, but they burn it on the last possession with that foul. Daniel Johnson comes out of the game. It'll be a short rest for him, you'd imagine. Ditch got his hand in the passing lane and well, had a look and then drops. Might have got a flat tie there. He can get up and throw it down. The time there just... Had to rattle in the uncontested lamp. Sometimes it's just better, you know, you go up there and just kiss it off the glass, make sure of it. Yeah, that was a, that, that's for those guys that can't jump. Kiss it off the glass. Adelaide led for the entire half. And the Kings put 29 on the board in the third quarter. There's a layoff. Took the lead back. They got away with one. 84 to 83. Vasilievich drives and can't finish off. Randall, we haven't seen a lot of in this fourth quarter. The game's leading scorer with 21. Down Frank's hand. Cooks get caught up. And the foul will be on Sydney, their third of the quarter. Yeah, the thing is with Randall, we, there's nothing cheap coming his way. Yeah, and even the, the, the shots he's made this second half, they've been all ooh-ah type shots, whether it's at the rim, and there you see the foul called on Cooks. And might have been a little lucky one in the game. Frank's looked like he was a little out of control, maybe stepping on it on the shoot. They've got to find a way to get Randall some easier looks. Easier said than done. Johnson fouled That's in the act of shooting three. Tim Suarez, the offender. Daniel Johnson's had a big second half. He has. Five for two from the field, 15 points. Throwing in a couple of rebounds, four or five rebounds. He's done quite well. Started off a bit slow, but... He's picked his game up. Knocked down a couple of threes. 13th season here in the Hungry Jacks NBL for Daniel Johnson. Season 11 at Adelaide. Did he play for the Melbourne Tigers? He did. Started off, went to the University of Pepperdine. Only went for one year. Didn't like the college system. And came back. And now Westover got it going. He started with the Melbourne Tigers. But he's a very, very young man. One for the Tigers. He's done most of his work as an Adelaide 36er. The Adelaide 36ers get the lead back. They surrendered it early in the third quarter. It's taken them that long to put their noses in front once more. And Norton is not shy. 
Good up. One of seven from outside for Kawad Noy. Tough look doesn't go. Joint mess. I think there's too much, much too much time left on the clock. You can get a better shot than what we saw from Cleveland. That last possession. That's the sort of thing you're doing in the last five seconds of the shot clock. Look at that crossover. Have a look at the. I should think he's a little stiff there, Cleveland. Slides his feet. Coach's challenge left for CJ Bruton. Another miss free throw for Sydney. Shane Hill. Guys, can't help be impressed by Walton Jr. He's just got so much poise. You see him in the first half. He lets the game come to him as he just misses two free throws. <laughs> You see him in the third quarter, he realised he needed to be able to step up. He got 10 points in that third quarter, then he's been setting the table for his teammates. That time he got himself to the free throw line after they had a, a couple of empty possessions. He is a really good player. I'll tell you what, Salmons is wearing Randall like a cheap suit. He, won't, he, he can't get a shot up. Hey. Almost dragged that lob in. Randall finally gets a bit of space and gets the three ball up. Offensive rebound, Johnson. Dex lost the ball. He had him too, the little head fake. That Simon's flying by and then just slipped out of his hands. 85-84 at Kudos Bank Arena. Timeout call, 2.20 remaining in this one. We've got ourselves a one-point game. Well, I'm, um, I'm bringing Mitch McCann back in the game, I think. And, and in fact, <laughs> he's coming back now. Mitch McCarran has been sitting down for a lot of this fourth quarter with four fouls. That's right, and this game's very much in the balance. In both teams, the last few possessions, they've had some looks that you normally expect them to make. That last one by Sunday, Detch was right there. He wasn't able to finish it. They're the plays you need. in these critical moments. Gee, opportunities down the stretch and there's been a few sloppy plays, a couple of missed shots and there was another one, almost a turnover. Possession arrow saves them. Randall has become the first player in NBA history to take 10 three-point shots in his first three NBL games. So, he's... First import or first... First player. Wow. In three, first, first three, three games, games yeah. of their career to have at least ten threes. You mean to tell me you didn't, you didn't get them up? So we, we, hey, <laughs> there you go. I played the first year. It was the first year of the three-point line. I think I only took eighteen or nineteen the whole season. Back then, we were still trying to figure out how to use the three-point line. That was a long time ago. <laughs> well, in the first two games, Craig Randall had taken 10. And only three players in history had taken 10 three-point attempts in their first two games. Those names were Paddy Mills for the Tigers in 2012. Yes. Derek Rucker for the Brisbane Bullets in 1990. And Aaron Douglas with the Devils in 1985. I remember Derek, of course. I'm not, I can't remember Aaron Douglas' work. Bad turnover. Oh, this is a little bit of casual.
Central Shade thrown out in Aaron Douglas' direction. Well, I, I just can't recall him. 1985, but Derek Rucker, he exploded on the scene. Him and Andre Moore, what a combination that was. Cooks. Frank's decided to sit off. Shooters on the season, Sydney. Randall got some space. Bang! That's what he can do. That's a big time. Huge three. That's what he can do as well. Walton Jr. putting on a show. Randall at the outer. This is a whole lot of fun. String on that ball. Well, this is just look, no space. The pressure's coming, and just nothing but the bottom of the net. What a big three! You can see the excitement, and the excitement just drops off a little bit because of what Walton's able to do down the other end. Big possession. He's been living by the three ball, Adelaide, and they jacked that one up. Sydney to tie it up or take the lead this trip down the floor. Cooks found the cutter baseline. Here's Vasily Mitch. Wide open three goes begging. That's how you get a good shot. They need a good shot here. Got to get a good shot. Adelaide, happy to soak up time on the shot clock. Randall has 24 points. Six made threes on the night. Had to change the shot. Franks will have to force that. It's not the possession they were looking for. Terrible possession. A lot of standing around. Got to play through Randall for sure. But that was just a little two-on-two -two game and covered well by the Sydney Kings. And the last two possessions poor. That Randall make that big shot, then he doesn't even get a touch, and Franks blazes away. And that time, then a Franks again forced into that one. Just need to get Randall going downhill. 35.2 seconds left. Sydney back in front. Derek Walton Jr., their leading scorer with 21 points. Is that who they go through here? Absolutely. If I'm running the play now, I've got a hot pick and roll for Jerry Walton. I'm spreading the floor. Everyone, spread the floor, hot pick and roll, and let him go down here. Now, if he doesn't have a shot, he'll find the right person. Yeah, it's a couple of really ugly possessions in, down the stretch here by both teams, but in particular, Adelaide 36, some of their shot selection has been not what they'd like, and this is a team that's still trying to figure it out. You can see Absolutely incredible talent that they have at their disposal. But it's going to take a little time for them to figure out. And these are the moments when you've got the three very big ticket items that all can deliver in this situation. And how in which you identify your targets is going to be part of the challenge. Simon Vasily, Mitch Cooks, Walton Jr. and Noy out there for Sydney. Franks, Cleveland, McCarran, Randall and Johnson for Adelaide. McCarran doing the little things. Well, that's right. The help was coming late. It just come from the weak side, but does enough to threaten DJ Vasiljevic. He flops, tries to get the foul, but that's just brilliant play, albeit late help coming from McCarran. And then there's a foul in the backcourt. Thank you. 
Sydney get the ball back. Shot and game clock almost in unison. Walton Jr. for three. No good. Suarez with the offensive rebound. He misses as well. Walton Jr. the second time. No good. It's a foul call. CJ Sam with dodge to pull it there. Walton with a couple of really good looks. A foul on the O boards. And I think it's going to go the way of the Adelaide 36ers. Helter skelter stuff. You know what they didn't? They could have, they didn't necessarily need the three straight. A quick. That, that, that's true. And, and you're coming down here. Good penetration there. Comes in, finds open. The, the kick out. And there's the first one. Suarez, and he should have made that. That's inexcusable. You've got to make that. And here's a, another really good look. And Suarez yellow, with the left hand. Not a lot of doubt about what Suarez did on that rebounding contest. So all you got to do now if you Adelaide 36, just need to, at the very least, make one. There was a coach's challenge. You might as well throw it out there if you got it stored up. You're going to call it, to probably call a timeout anyway. So maybe you think that someone in the review centre was going to have some sort of breakdown. Number 10, Adelaide to shoot to. I have a breakdown and not see the obvious. And just also, it's a lot easier to shoot these free throws when you're three points up. Perhaps trying to on their clock now. Trying to ice the shooter is a little bit with that timeout. But like I said, I reckon when you're three up, sometimes the timeout in this circumstance is it helps the shooter because you get to realise and say, hey, there's been all this help to scale the stuff. We're three up. Would this be two losses at home in a row? Of course, it sure would be. Yep. And how many? They haven't lost. They've won 10 of their last They're 15. Wow. they won 15 in a row on the road, yeah. though, guys. Right. They are the road warriors. They go down here. They, got a, they, they come to town on Sunday against the mighty Melbourne United. Well, are they mighty Melbourne? That's the question. Well, that's another question. You, 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 uh, we'll get to that post game. It's a two possession game. Walton Jr. had space. What about the pass from Xavier Cooks? 4.2 is it? It's oh, a oh, basketball. Goodness. They've almost what cuffed it up. Doing? First of all, you don't give away a layup. That easy layup. The game wasn't Wait, over to that extent. Three second layup. Just throw it. Don't drop it here. And, and you know what? Adelaide had a timeout too. They still had one that, even in those circumstances, a quick timeout advanced the ball. Instead, they they dodge a bullet. Look at it here. But if Randall's going to save it, save it here. Throw it to the other end. What is he thinking? Wow. TV said, don't worry about that. We've got this win. About two seconds left. Sydney, as you can see, had zero timeouts left, so that one scared me. That's heart attack central for the 36ers fans. <laughs> 13 points for Mitch McCarron. <laughs> and that will ice the game. For the Adelaide 36ers, the talk happened during the week, but when it came time, they shot it like the Golden State Warriors, and they come to Kudos Bank Arena and beat Sydney, 92 to 88. The 36ers are loaded, and they played that way tonight. They came out tonight looking like they wanted this win. It looked personal, didn't it? I mean, from, from word go. They shot the ball extremely well in that first quarter to let Sydney know you got a contest in your hand. Oh, absolutely. And I think they played the Sydney, excuse me, the Adelaide 36ers where they sort of allowed the, the, the Sydney Kings to hang around. They looked like they had control, particularly in that first half. But uh, this is a team that's clearly a work in progress. CJ Bruton will breathe a, a sigh of relief because it was a, a helter-skelter last couple of minutes. And I think... Both these teams will go through the tape and 
clearly have some reviewing to do and how they deal with those last couple of minutes. Shane Heal's got our footlocker player of the game, Craig Randall. Well, congratulations. 24 points, some threes that came from Cronulla at one stage, but more importantly, a massive win against the reigning champs. That's all that matter. Uh, that's what we wanted to come in here and do. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of talk before the game, so we wanted to come in here and just be us and get a good win. This is a good win for us moving forward to uh, start our streak. You guys have improved every game. What's been the focus since you got back from America? Just staying locked in. Uh, the first game, I guess the uh, Tads, we weren't locked in at all. So just staying locked in, staying, staying key to what Coach is saying, uh, just being us. I listen to everybody else around us. I were this and that, just being us and staying true to us. You love playing with a whole lot of emotion. I saw you talking a bit of trash to the Kings. What, what were you sharing with them? It's a long game, so that's all. It's fun. Uh, they're competitive. We're competitive. We got more matchups coming up, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, it was a good quality win for us. How have you found the NBL so far? You guys have got an unbelievable team, a lot of talent. But what are you learning as you go along in this process? It's a tough league. Uh, some of the best players in the world in this league, and I'm, I'm a big believer in that. And so I'm excited for what the NBL is bringing. Uh, and I'm excited to get moving further forward. Playing well, mate. Keep putting on a show. He sure is. 26 years of age, Craig Randall. Still with aspirations to play in the NBA. Oh, yeah. And tonight, 24 points, six made threes. He was an enormous factor. I, I think he is an NBA player. We're lucky to have him here. And we've got a lot of players that are NBA players that uh, we're very fortunate to have this level of talent. But it's exciting. It's the way the game's evolving and the ability to knock down the three and how important it is. And it's not just knocking down the three. It's knocking down the three from out of space. That's <laughs> really been impressive when it comes to Randall. Some of the shots he's able to make, they end up shooting it from the three-point line at 40%. At the end of the day, that was the difference. They were 14 to 35. And there you see his stats individually. Very impressive. Six of 11 from three. And I'm thinking about the six boards and five assists. And the Sydney Kings, well, they just could not get consistency from the three-point line. Six of 28. Let's get courtside. Joe healy has got the captain, Mitch McCarran. I do, Mitch. 15 points for yourself. All five starters in double figures as well. But can you sum that one up? Oh, we moved the ball pretty well. Um, you know, we made some shots early and got on a run. But, um, yeah, I, I thought we were really composed when they made their run and they made their shots. And uh, we just got to trust ourselves on both ends.